What was required during the war was that everyone should try and support the nature and the desire to win. And then the need to deal with this huge number of wounded. Sorry, I just have to wait for you. Those people needed to be farmed out to the existing hospitals. There was no National Health Service, of course, till 1945. So everyone who was involved in the medical business packed their wards with extra beds. But Downton finds itself a part of that. And almost with shock, the family realized that they too must hand over their house in order that it should be a convalescent home. This happened in most of the great houses up and down the country. But here, even in Yorkshire, a long way away from the front, we see the family working out that they've got to hand over the glory of their Edwardian house to the needs of the war. I think it's a ridiculous idea. Why? Because this is a house, not a hospital. With Downton, uh, we felt that the basic principle that the family would live alongside it was more believable in a convalescent home than in a hospital. This one looks as if it's been open, but it hasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Ethel, have you nothing to do? Many of those houses at the time, a lot of the families moved out because this disruption was huge. But our lot uh, <laughs> stay around and have to live cheek by jowl with all these officers. And at the beginning, that's quite tough. This happened because it was necessary. And the family therefore had to constrain their glamorous life, but they kept the standards going. They still changed for dinner and all that went on. But most of the house, the principal rooms have been turned into wards or into places where those officers who were recuperating could uh, sit and play games. And I think that it had an enormous effect. Oh, really? It's like living in a second-rate hotel where the guests keep arriving and no one seems to leave. We moved lots of the big furniture into small spaces. The small library came, their living room. It was you know, almost on the scale of everybody else's living room for them. And uh, what we tried to do with it is keep a lot of the rich and lavish things in the room and then put in these dreadful trestle tables for eating, the, the hospital beds. So every time you walked in, you just thought, this is not a pretty room, this is just a, a functional room. We then decided which rooms were going to do which things. The, the, the main saloon, the main hall was to be a sort of canteen, for want of a better word. The drawing room became the the hospital beds, where the hospital beds are, and the library became the exercise games room, with the family in the small library still hearing ping pong balls rattle around over the, over the top of the screens, and people playing cards and making a noise. But it was all about making their world much smaller in, in a house they owned. I'm afraid we've all bullied you into the whole thing. I hope you're not dreading it too much. Not dreading it exactly, but it's a brave new world we're headed for, no doubt about that. We must try to meet it with as much grace as we can muster. It's not easy to get all of the machinery of a big TV series turning up and uh, taking over. There's sort of organised chaos, really. We're hopefully just the right side of, of tipping into complete chaos. Insofar as we don't have the scripts months and months beforehand, the scripts are written as we go along, so our planning is really quite last minute compared to many walks of life. The house was disrupted um, in a way that didn't make it seem poor a place, but it just seemed a more chaotic place because they're used to tranquil, quiet life of no, di no disruption at all. And here's suddenly there's just men and loads of men uh, all over the place every day, 24 hours a day. All the young kitchen boys, hall boys, have gone off to war. So it's all, you know, there's not enough people in the house, so people have to just do extra stuff and yeah. it's, uh, it's confusing. But it's still frenetic and they still have, um, you know, entertaining to do here and there, so it's it's never quiet. What are you giving them to eat? Not much. They know the money's for the hospital, so they can't expect Belshazzar's feast. I'll make some cheese straws. The stress of having to run the house in an improper manner, it seems to cast, and having to use maids in the dining room and uh, the houses, the standards are being let slip. He allows that to get to him. There's no need to be so rough! There's every need! Down one as we knew it, that's totally gone, and it's just uh, a scene of sort of organised chaos, mayhem. Where are the spoons for this? Just here. Oh, my God, I've forgotten the sauce. And Mr Lang's bringing the sauce and the Melba toast. Right. I imagine right, that it would be quite a guilty thing to do if you had this sat in this grand house while there's, there's men dying by the thousands on the battlefields to, to try and preserve this grand house. And the loss of all those... the golden youth, you know, it was... Ugh. 
It was the war that did change, forced people to change. Their huge losses made them change. They, you know, they, they lost. It's, it's, it's impossible to imagine. It's odd for, for Violet because she obviously was the king of the castle at one point. But I have a feeling she's older and wiser than the, than the rest of them. And I think she just sort of had been there, done that, and got the t shirt, you know? War deals out strange tasks. Remember your great aunt Roberta. What about her? She loaded the guns at Lucknow. There is no no direct rules of you can and can't go here, and she's able to speak to people far more freely instead of waiting for someone to come and visit. There are people there all the time, and, and it's, it's a place of work, of real work for everyone. I said I could drive the tractor. Edith, you are a lady, not Toad of Toad Hall. Well, I'm doing it. What's interesting, too, is the manner in which the household staff deal with the arrival of the medical support staff who have their own agenda and their own needs. Mrs. Patmore seems to be disobeying my instructions and I can't get to the reason why. If you mean the patient's new lunchtime, her ladyship felt that it made the staff lunch an unreasonably early. She moved it so that they could eat at noon. Has she indeed? And you have this struggle between Isabel, who's sort of part of the family and had been the originator of the idea of turning Danton into a convalescent home, and Cora, who's trying to keep the house and protect it and make it her own. And the battle between the two of them, of course, is a very natural one between any inner family. This is my house, and I am in charge right alongside you. And if you would stop your bullying... That's enough. I will not listen to this. Once you have an organism like this, who runs it? Who makes the decisions? You know, that becomes another question. You go from these horrific scenes of wartime in the trenches with men being blown up and... Then you cut back to these rather petty domestic battles that are being fought on the home front with every bit the passion and energy and commitment. I cannot operate where I am not valued. You must see that. Certainly. She has been the mistress of this, of Downton Abbey, and um, she's not going to be superseded by a parvenu like Isabel. <laughs> All the rules no longer applied about how things work, and um, the world changed in a, in a massive way for them very, very quickly. So they all had to cope with it in different ways, all the characters, and it's interesting to see how they all cope with it in different ways. <laughs>